How's it going everyone? My name is Miguel Fuentes and today is Sunday and uh, today I have a word uh, and we're going to be continue, continuing on the Gospel of Luke series. We're in chapter 15 today. Praise God we're, we're almost halfway done with this series. Amen. So hopefully I get this done May, May in September or, or probably late October. But I just want to give God praise for what He has done so far in my life. And, you know, God is good. Amen. So, uh, whew, excuse me, a little bit tired. So before we get started, let's pray first. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, Father. And, Lord, we ask of you in Jesus' name that you will fill us up with your Holy Spirit. I pray that those who are lost, I pray that they will find Christ. Lord, I pray that you, I pray that they will be set free. I pray that they will get delivered in Jesus' name. And, and Lord, we ask that you would come and change our hearts, change our mind, Lord. Uh, because, Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Lord, we know that you are real. I know that you guide the Israelites out of Egypt into the promised land. And we would thank you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, <clears throat> turn with me in Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. <clears throat> and I'm going to be reading out the modern English version today. So, so let's read. Now all the tax collectors and sinners draw near to him to hear him. But the Pharisees and the scribes mumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, saying, What man among you? Having a having a hundred sheep and losing one of them does not leave the ninety nine in the wilderness and go after the one who is lost until he find, uh, finds it. And when he has found it, he places it on his shoulder, rejoicing. Even when he came home, he called together his friends and neighbors. Saying of saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Likewise I told I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety nine righteous men who needs no repentance. Very, very interesting. Verse verse eight or oh, what woman Having ten silver coins and losing one, does not light a candle and and sweep the house and search uh, diligently until he finds it. And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, "Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I had lost." Likewise, I tell you, there is rejoice in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he says, a man had two sons. The younger of them says to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that falls to me. So he divided his estate between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and journeyed to a distant country and there uh, squatted his possessions in particle living when he had spent everything and there came a severe famine in, the, in that country 
and he began to be in want. So he went to and hired himself to a citizen of that country who sent him into his fields to feed swine. He would gladly have filled his stomach with the husk that the swine were eating, but no one gave him any. When he came to himself, he says, How many of my father's hired servants have had abundance of bread, and, he, and here I am perishing with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he arose and came to his father's father. Sorry. But while he was yet far away, his father saw him, and he was moved. He was moved with compassion, and ran and embraced his neck and kissed him. The son says to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be, to be called your son. But the father says to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on, on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoe on his feet. Bring him the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and, and be merry for this son of mine w was dead and is still alive again he was lost and he and is found so they bought to be married now his older son was in the field as he came and draw near the house he heard music and dancing, so he came. So he, so he called one of the servants and asked what this meant. He says to him, "Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fat calf, because he has received him safe and sound." He was angry, and would not go in. Therefore, the therefore his father came out, and entreated him. But he answered his father's look, These many years I have served you, nor have I ever transgressed your commandments, yet never have you given me a goat so that I may be merry with my friends. But when this son of, of yours came, who has devoured your living with harlots, you Kill the father's calf for him. He says to him, he says to him, son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. But it is so it was fitting to be merry and be glad, for this brother of yours were was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. May the Lord have you have His blessing upon you. So, why does Jesus tell us parables? In order to be His disciples, we must be led by the Holy Spirit, and that is my introduction, introduction, say, uh, uh, sense. So, the first thing that we see is the parable of the lost sheep. And and you know this this reminds me of this song, um, Corey Asbury um song called uh, um what's the name of it? Oh, reckless love. There you go, reckless love. And uh, man, when I heard that song, I'm like, man, this is powerful. Because in, in the parable of the lost sheep, Jesus is saying, I'm going after the one who is lost, not the 99 righteous men. 
Because you got you gotta understand that the gospel is for the lost, for the sinners. Uh, when we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we now understand that it is our duty as believers that we should be evangelizing to uh, to the people, either doing street preaching either doing traveling evangelists or doing uh, or, or you're doing your own job that maybe probably 50% of your company curse like sailors and you know they need to be safe but I give God praise for what he has done I give God glory for what he has done because I believe personally that that the Lord is 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 trying to uh, remind us that yes, you know, um, we we're glad that we're saved, but but our calling is to bring, uh, sorry, is to make more disciples to come to the kingdom. And so it, it's very very wise to understand why did Jesus tell these parables? Because the gospel is very very important. And that many people need to be saved before time uh, run, runs out, basically. And, um, you know, the parable of the lost sheep is a very interesting parable in how heaven shall rejoice over one sinner that comes to Jesus. It's very, very important to tell, to tell people about Jesus. And, and really, you know, God is good all the time. Even, you know, when, when I look back that I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in 2011, I remember I was in tears. You know, I felt like I wasn't worthy to come to Jesus. But yet, Jesus gave me mercy. Yet Jesus gave me grace to come to him. And I accept him. And to this very day, I walk with him. And to this very day, uh, God began to bless uh, with a new with, with a job and, and also uh, with my fiance. And, 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 and that's a blessing to come. I believe that God is is trying to wake me up to realize it is a blessing to tell people about Jesus Christ. That's why I came came on YouTube. Not only to do uh, Bible studies and sermons, but also or book reviews or um, doing teachings on. Uh, what's called uh, astronomy or chemistry or biology or whatever in this channel. The only reason that I created this channel is that people need to hear the gospel. People need to, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior before it's too late. And I'm glad. I'm glad. Number two, the parable of the lost coin. And we see the same thing, the same phrase. Heaven rejoices over one sinner comes to Jesus. Even the angels of the Lord rejoice when one person comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. And and it's really, really amazing how God uses these parables to really understand the importance of the gospel. And, and I remember reading um, about the Second Great Awakening. That many people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it's so amazing how there's miracles happening there. There's people speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues. And we've seen drunkards. We've seen... Fornicators, we've seen 
a lot of these things and now they became believers in Christ because they heard the gospel and I'm so glad that they did so the last point I want to make is that the parable of the lost son or in some translations in the in the little um, header of that passage of scriptures would say the, the parable of the prodigal son and uh, it's pretty interesting this story or this parable that the younger son uh, spent all his money and now he had to work at a pig farm or swan uh, swine farm so that's on the called pigs and um uh, It is very, very, very important to understand what that that was, you know, what that parable was all about. Because understand, he was worried that his dad was going to reject him, and now we see him practicing his lines like, "Father, I repent. You know, I come, don't come to you. You know, repentance between heaven and you." Uh, to forgive me and to uh, become your hard servants. So, so what what happened was he went up to his father's house, and the father knew way in the distance that that's his son, and he ran, embraced him, kissed him, and uh, he he apologized and repented. It says and then tell his. Uh, hire servants to get the best robe, the, the best calf that they got, and we're going to have a celebration. Because I thought you, I thought you were dead, but now you're alive again. I think that's, I think, I think, I think that's a beauty of the gospel, is that, yes, before Christ, we are dead in our sins. And now we are founded by Christ. Because we heard the gospel, we heard the good news. We, we we are being set free from the addictions. We are being set free from our livelihoods, and I give God glory and praise for what He has done in my life and in your life as well. As I read your testimonies, how God changed your life, how you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and all that stuff. It, it just blesses my heart to see people come to saving the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It is. It is. So I thought that's all I got for today, folks. I uh, hope you guys are having a great, great weekend and week. Those of you who are going back to work tomorrow. Uh, don't forget, please, share, like, subscribe for more. Uh, help, you know, support this this Christian channel because I believe personally personally that the more we share the good news of Jesus Christ hopefully the chances are people will hear the gospel and get saved so if you if you don't mind you know share subscribe like and uh, yeah let's 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 do the work let's do the work of the kingdom of God amen so may God bless you may God keep you I'll see you guys again next time